Hi, welcome to One by One Guitars. I'm Dan O'Grady. I've reached something of a milestone in my guitar and bass building. The guitar you see behind my shoulder is build number 49, and that's got a paisley fabric top, and that'll be going to one of my charity partners uh, for auctioning for their fundraiser uh, some point in the spring. As this was, the finish was curing, and I was getting ready to do the final assembly on it, I was already starting to think ahead, and I went, wow, build number 50, that's kind of a milestone. My initial thought was to maybe build kind of a vanity build, uh, a guitar that was going to be all out with best woods and pickups and so on that would be for me. And then I thought, you know, the reality is I don't really need another guitar. Shh, don't tell anybody that. But what I wanted was a challenge. So I decided to build um, a short scale bass. I've done long scale basses. I've done medium scale basses, but I hadn't done a short scale bass. So I didn't have the existing templates, I didn't have the existing drawings and so on. I do all my own templates, all my own drawings, and I thought for, especially for those of you who might be new to guitar building, whether you're thinking about electric guitars, basses, number of strings, it doesn't matter. Those are all details, but the fundamentals of how I start my organization planning and design, you might find helpful. And you'll see I've swapped out the Paisley guitar, number 49, for this one. The reason why is that this is the style of body that I'm going to use for my short scale bass. I'm going to have to do a brand new neck template and there's obviously going to be some adjustments to bridge placement and controls and the pickups and so on. But I'm going to cheat a little bit and rather than design a whole new body is this will be the body shape and I can use my existing template for that. Let me show you where I am with on paper. On my workbench, here what I've done is created a full scale paper drawing. And while I will use design software on the computer at certain stages when I'm looking at designing a guitar is that I find nothing beats having that full scale drawing for finding errors. And let me move a couple of these pieces out of the way and I'll show you what I mean. When I was initially looking at the neck design, and I always start with, I draw out, you can see it here in black, this is, this is the center line. This is the line where the bridge saddles will be. And we go all the way up, we have a center line. And this line here is where the nut will be. And that creates my scale length. So it's 30 inches from the bridge saddles to, the, to this um, side of, of the nut. And I knew I wanted to use about a 1 and 5 eighths inch width at the nut. I wasn't sure what it was going to be down here at the bridge end. A standard bass bridge, it was going to be a little too wide, spacing from the E string to the G string to, to have a, a comfortable neck. So what I found was, and this is the let me put this kind of in place here for you. This is the old style three point uh, Gibson bridge and it has a narrower spacing. As you can see, I've written myself a few notes here. This is 52 millimeters rather than a 54 or even 57 that you'll find sometimes on a base bridge. And the reason why is, and so now you can see in purple, is that I needed to see how are the strings going to fall? What would that mean for a total neck width and so on? Well, when I did that initially, and that's why there's a sheet of paper here, I screwed it up. The nice part was, I, after I caught my mistake, all I had to do was change out a piece of paper. It didn't cost me anything, as opposed to if I hadn't caught that and had gone ahead and milled out either templates or even a neck blank, I would have been cursing. Once I get the the bridge to the nut lined up and where the strings are going to fall that allows me to measure out for things like what's the neck width going to be at the heel where is it going to where's the body going to cross 
uh, as far as where the frets are and so on. I am going to have two uh, pickups on this. I'm using EMGs, uh, but passive, not active. And I've kind of just sketched in where they're probably going to go. This is just all initial work, the same way. Um, you can see I write myself all sorts of little notes here. I'm probably going to do it almost like a jazz bass where you have a, a volume for the a neck pickup, a volume for the bridge pickup, and then a master tone control. Uh, no switch. Being able to measure out where the strings are going to go, it let me play around a little bit initially with a headstock shape, which is my standard headstock shape, and where the tuners are going to go. Again, this was all on paper. That let me find out, okay, what size truss ride do I need? It lets me lay it out to be sure, yep, that's the right length. And again, lets me put the put the actual bridge on there, and I can put the night on, and so on. Um, I never start construction until I have every part in hand, and that leads me to this. You can see I love these little flip-top plastic boxes that you can just buy from Amazon or even at a container store or Target, and so on. I can put all my hardware in the box. Keeps it clean, keeps it organized. It's not super organized at the moment because I've been shuffling things, but you can see I've got my EMG pickups. I normally create my own nuts from uh, bone blanks, but I went ahead this time and, and, and just bought one just to save a little time. I have already happened to have milled some uh, cavity covers that I know will work. All my electronics are there in the bag, so I've got pots, the tone cap. And some of this is because, as you realize, is you've got to get... As you buy components, there are things that have to match other things. So, for example, as I'm using CTS pots for this build, if I use CTS pots, they have a fine neural. I need a certain uh, I need knobs that will match. If I was using alpha pots, for example, that have the coarse neural on the shaft, whoop, then I'd have to use um, a different kind of, of knob. I've got a couple of choices there for fret uh, marker inlays. I may not even use any in the end. I've got some. Uh, uh, my tuners already, so it allows me to measure for um, what diameter hole I'm going to drill for the posts and also how thick the headstock should be. So I've got all my odds and ends in there. And again, as I'm doing construction, I can just fold it up, keep things clean. I've also started to pull some, some wood selections. This is the only piece that's actually already been milled. It's an African mahogany two-piece body. I buy rough lumber, mill it myself into a blanks. But I know it's the right size to build um, this body shape. Same way as this may change, but at the moment I'm actually thinking to do a spalted maple top. So I've got my rough two-piece blank. I've even already kind of penciled in just to be sure that the shape will fit what the best layout's going to be. I've got some maple strips I can use for binding the fretboard, which I'll get to in a second. And again, I've got a, a neck here that I laminated up back in 2017, so it's had plenty of time to stabilize. And if it was going to have an issue, I would know about it. Uh, so it's three-piece mahogany with two thin maple strips. And again, I know it's thick enough and wide enough and long enough for this build. Usually I do fretboards. Again, I buy just the raw lumber and then mill it myself and cut my own fret slots. I, since I hadn't done a 30 in, uh, inch scale rather than hand measuring though, again is, um, I guess you could say cheat or you could say did it the smart way, is uh, Luthier's Mercantile will do any scale you want. So I went ahead and ordered a board from them. And I've already even created my own template from it because these are dead accurate cut sl fret slots. So I've got the basic stuff together.